Could I tell you just a quick story out of my own experience in life? Sixty odd years ago, I was on a farm in Canada. I had purchased this from another who had been somewhat careless in keeping it up. And I went out one morning and found a currant bush at least six feet high. There was no sign of blossom or fruit. I had had some experience in pruning trees before we left Salt Lake to go to Canada as my father had a fruit farm. I got my pruning shears and went to work on that currant bush. And I clipped it and cut it and cut it down until there was nothing left but a little clump of stumps. As I looked at this little clump of stumps, there seemed to be a tear on each one. And I said, what's the matter, current bush? What are you crying about? And I thought I heard that current bush speak. It seemed to say, how could you do this to me? I was making such wonderful growth, and now you've cut me down. How could you do it? I thought you were the gardener here. I said, look, little current bush, I am the gardener here. And I know what I want you to be. If I let you go the way you want to go, you'll never amount to anything. But someday, when you're laden with fruit, you're going to think back and say, Thank you, Mr. Gardener, for cutting me down, for loving me enough to hurt me. Ten years passed, and I found myself in Europe. I had made some progress in the First World War in the Canadian Army. And the day after I received a telegram from London, said, be in my office tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. I puffed up and I went to London. I walked into the office of the general and he said, Brown, you're entitled to this promotion, but I cannot make it. You have qualified past the regulations, you've had the experience, you're entitled to it in every way, but I cannot make this appointment. Just then he went into the other room to answer a phone call. I looked over on his desk to see what my personal history sheet showed. And I saw on the bottom of that history sheet in large capital letters, this man is a Mormon. And I knew why he couldn't make the appointment. Finally, he came back and said, that's all, Brown. I saluted him less heartily than before and went out. On my way back, I thought every turn of the wheel that cracked across the rails was saying you're a failure. And bitterness rose in my heart until when I arrived finally in my tent, I threw rather vigorously my cap on the cot. I clenched my fist and I shook it at heaven. And I said, how could you do this to me, God? I've done everything that I knew how to do to uphold the standards of the church. I was making such wonderful growth, and now you cut me down. How could you do it? And then I heard a voice. It sounded like my own voice. And the voice said, I'm the gardener here. I know what I want you to be. If I let you go the way you want to go, you'll never amount to anything. And someday, when you are ripened in life, you are going to shout back across time and say, Thank you, Mr. Gardener, for cutting me down, for loving me enough to hurt me. With those words, which I recognize now as my words to the current bush, which had become God's word to me, I fell to my knees and prayed for forgiveness for my arrogance and my ambition. Will you remember that little experience which changed my whole life, where the gardener took control and did for me what was best for me? Looking back over 60 years, thank you, Mr. Gardner, for cutting me down.